Welcome. In this video, we'll be constructing this circuit. It is a 555 timer circuit, and it puts the timer in bistable or flip-flop mode. It's a really useful circuit for a lot of things. We'll go through each step involved in assembling it on a breadboard. When we're done, you'll have a circuit that looks like this. The way this circuit will work is if you press the bottom momentary button, the LED comes on. You press the top one, it goes off. Effectively, the 5-5 timer is serving as a flip-flop. To build this circuit, one will need some sort of power supply. This is a 9 volt to 5 volt power supply. We'll need a breadboard. And the following parts. Two 10K resistors. Quarter watts fine. A 330 ohm resistor. A 100 microfarad capacitor. Two momentary buttons that are normally open. When you are not pressing them, the circuit is broken. When you press them, it's closed. A 55 timer. I'm using an NE55N. There's other varieties of 55 timers, but most any of them should work for this circuit. You need an LED. Two 0.1 microfarad capacitors. They're often marked as 104 on their casing. And some wire. First thing one will want to do is connect their power supply to the breadboard. Next, take that 100 microfarad capacitor, making sure to place the negative leg in the blue rail, place it in the breadboard like so. Then we need to connect each side rails of the board together. Like that. Then one will want to place their 5-5 timer in the board. Notice the timer I'm using has a small indentation indicating pin 1. It also has this cup at the very top of the chip also indicating what, where the pin count starts. This is pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. One can also go ahead and install those two momentary buttons. And just keeping in mind, they're normally open buttons. You can use a meter to test which leg, which of these legs connect when the button is pushed. In my case, I just had to stick them over this center trough. Now we need to refer to the schematic to build the circuit. The first thing we'll want to do is connect pin 8 to the 5 volt power supply rail. Next, we'll connect pin 1 to ground. We can now add that 0.1 microfarad capacitor between pins 8 and 1. This just takes up any surges that might happen on the power rails. It's a last ditch effort to stop those. Now 100 microfarad capacitors are supposed to take up the load. <laughs> any huge surges or, or brownout conditions as well as the power supply I'm using has two 100 microfarad capacitors. But just to be safe, it's always good practice to connect a 0.1 microfarad capacitor across the positive and negative leads of most chips. Like that. 
we can move to the next connections on pins 6 and 5. Pin 6 is just connected directly to the ground rail. Pin 5 is connected to the ground rail through a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. And notice that I have added these polarity symbols, but I'm using non-polarized capacitors. Most of the 0.1 microfarad capacitors are not polarized, but if you happen to be using electrolytics for this, you would want to obey the polarity of that capacitor, or either it will blow up on you. Pin 6 to ground. Pin 5 gets a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. Just connecting it from 5 rail down to the next rail. And then connect the other leg of that capacitor to the ground rail. We already have our buttons in place, so we refer back to our schematic, which says that each of those buttons, the right hand leg needs to be connected to the ground rail for both of them. Got the right hand side of the buttons taken care of. At this point, we move to the more complicated parts of the circuit. We'll need two pull-up resistors, two 10K pull-up resistors, one for pin 2, one for the reset pin, pin 4. One basically to the trigger pin, one to the reset pin. This will keep the trigger pin, when nothing is happening, no buttons are being pushed, it will be pulled high. The same will be happening for reset, which is necessary to pull reset high in order to output a high voltage. We can refer back to the schematic just to verify that. We have pin 2 connected to the power rail through a 10K pull-up. We have pin 4 connected reset connected through a pull-up, 10K pull-up to the power rail. With our pull-up resistors in place, we can continue with the circuit. The first, or the trigger pin, is connected to our bottom momentary button. The reset pin is connected to the upper momentary button. To connect reset first, Now to connect the trigger to the bottom button. At this point, if we added power, we, would, we will have the means to toggle the output of pin 3 high or low using these two buttons. But let's go ahead and connect our LED. To do that, we just need to start at pin 3, the output pin, and connect an LED, the 330 ohm resistor, to ground. This is going to be our output line. And with the LED, you just want to make sure that the flat side is toward the ground rail and the round side is toward the timer.
take our 330 ohm resistor. You could use 330 ohms all the way up to 1K. It's just the higher resistance you use, the 5.5 timer doesn't output the complete voltage that it's receiving. If it's receiving 5 volts, you're only going to be getting something like 4.4, 4.5 out of the timer. It takes a certain amount of voltage just to run the timer itself. So the higher resistor value you use, the dimmer your LED will be. 330 does pretty well with a red LED. We disconnect our 330 ohm resistor to the cathode of our LED and the other end of the resistor to ground. We should now be able to add power to our circuit and push the bottom button connected to the trigger should turn the LED on and it does. We can push the top button connected to reset, the master reset, and the LED will go out. This is a 5-5 timer in bi-stable mode. Hope this video was helpful. If it was, please click like and subscribe to my channel. And check out future videos where I will discuss in detail what's actually going on in this circuit. This video is just to help us all build it and be on the same page for those later videos about the operation of the 5.5 timer. Thank you.